What's up guys? Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity beginner tutorial for you. So we're continuing our series on getting started with Unity and in today's video we're going to talk about game objects. So how you can use them, how you can kind of adjust them and use components in order to change the way that they behave, other things like that. So this is really designed to help you start working with objects in Unity 3D. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the concept of a game object is really important inside of Unity. So basically a game object is really anything that sits inside of your scene. So for example, your camera is a game object, your lights are a game object. When you start adding like planes and shapes and characters, those are all gonna be game objects. And what you do with game objects is you add components to them to add functionality so that you can make them do what you want inside of Unity. And so let's start by adding a couple objects. And usually what you're gonna do is you can either right click in the hierarchy or go up to game object and you can create objects using these functions right here. So there's options for empties, then built-in 3D objects, there's effects, um, lots of different things that are in here. We could talk more about some of these in the future. For now, let's go ahead and let's add a plane. So I'm just gonna add a plane right here well, notice how what that plane does is that gets placed inside of your 3D space. It's an object labeled plane, and it has information over here, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And so the information associated with the, um, with the object is over here on the right-hand side of the page. And notice how you can adjust these things, right? You can adjust your position, you can adjust your rotation and scale, and those are going to adjust the way that your object looks or sits inside of your 3D workspace. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by bringing these to the center, like this. And so notice how by changing these, Notice how by changing these, they're changing its location in the 3D workspace. So this is basically storing that information inside of this object, but it's a visual way of doing it instead of making you write out like a script or something like that that says object to be at zero, zero, zero. And so let's go ahead and let's add a new object. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a cube. And then I'm gonna move the cube over here as well. So again, I'm just gonna put it at zero, zero, zero. I'm gonna move it up and we can take a look at it. If you look at this cube and then you look at the information on the right-hand side of the page, notice how we can kind of get an idea of how this cube is being built. So first off, we have the transform, which gives us an idea of where an object sits inside of the 3D space. Then after that, we've got other things that are controlling what you can see. So for this object, for example, this has a mesh which is basically the shape of the object that's in here. And then it has a mesh renderer, which makes your object visible. So notice how if I uncheck the box for mesh renderer, this object is no longer going to show up inside of my scene, right? And then down below, you've got a box collider, which is going to have more to do with physics, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then there's also a shader associated with it, which is just a standard shader, which is the material of the object. Well, let's say we wanted to build a brand new object. So instead of using one of the preset objects over here, which have this pre-populated, let's say that we wanted to create an object that was empty. So if we create an empty, that's basically gonna be an object that only has a transform associated with it. So all that it has is a location in the 3D space. But notice how when I move this up and over, there's nothing actually inside of this object, right? So if you look at it, there's actually nothing in here. So what we wanna do is we wanna add some stuff or components to this object in order to make it visible. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell Unity what it is. And we can do that by clicking on the Add Component button and then scrolling down to the Mesh option. And in this case, we're gonna select an option for a Mesh Filter. And so when we select the option for Mesh Filter, we can click in here and notice how there are different assets that are in here that we can assign to this. And so these are kind of the pre-built assets that you can assign to an object. But let's say that we wanted to build a sphere. Well, what we can do is we can click on the sphere right here or double click on it in order to set this as our mesh. So now this game object, which we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call a sphere. Notice how when we call this a sphere, the name changes over in the hierarchy 
as well. But now this game object has a sphere mesh associated with it. But at the moment, notice how you don't actually see anything in the 3D space. The reason is we haven't given Unity any instructions for how to display this object. So it's like calling a sphere object, but then we haven't told it how to show it on the screen. So what we want to do in this case is we just want to click on the button for add component and then under mesh, we want to add a mesh renderer. So if we click in here like this, notice how now our sphere is going to show up and it's showing up as a pink material, which we'll talk about in a second, but now it's actually showing that geometry associated with this object. And so with this geometry associated with this object, now if I move this around, the sphere is actually going to move around inside of my scene. And so right now it's showing up as pink because it doesn't have a material associated with it. So notice inside of the mesh renderer, there's no material associated with this object. And so you could either click on this button right here and you could find the materials that are currently in your scene, or you could create a new one. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to go inside of the assets folder that I've created. Well, I could right click in here and I could create a new material. And we could just call this, we'll call it blue for right now. And so that material can be applied to this object by dragging it onto the object. So when I take that material that's blue and drag it on the object, notice how this is no longer pink. This actually has a color associated with it. And the blue material right now though, isn't actually blue. So what we've done so far is we've set up our location in a 3D space. We've set this up to call a sphere mesh. And then we've set this up to render it using the mesh renderer and to apply a blue material. And so real quick, I'm just gonna jump into my blue material I'm just gonna set the albedo of this material to a blue, like this. So now this object is actually working in the 3D space as an object. And notice how you can adjust things inside of the renderer to change what this does. So for example, you can set this where it does or does not cast shadows by selecting this option right here. You can also set if it receives shadows. So let's say that we were to Move this box over here. And let's go ahead and let's make it bigger. So we'll scale it up by two. So what we want is we want a really big shadow right here. So our directional light is shining down and we want this object to have a shadow. Well now notice if I put this close to this object, it's going to receive those shadows. So Unity is gonna simulate the light showing the shadows on this object. Well, you could uncheck this box and then it's no longer going to receive shadows inside of your scene. So you can use this in order to control the way that light interacts with your object. And so most of the time you're not gonna build your objects from scratch like that. Usually you're either gonna bring them in from different asset libraries or other 3D programs, or you're gonna build them um, using presets, but it's important to know how these things build on top of each other because that's gonna be fundamental to building inter interactions into Unity later. And so let's say for example, so right now, if I was to click play on this scene, I'm gonna set my camera up in a better location real quick. So we'll just go right here and then we'll go to game object and we'll say align with view. So that's gonna align our camera with this view. Well, let's say I was to click play right now, nothing is actually happening in game view, right? It's just like this static scene. So it's not very interesting. So let's go ahead and let's add another component to this sphere object. Um, so that it actually moves around, so that it's simulating physics. So you can simulate the physics with the object by adding a new component. Remember that all of these components are gonna add different behaviors to your objects. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to add physics to this object. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna set this up so that it's a rigid body. So if we add a rigid body component to this object, what that's going to do is that's going to simulate this being a real object inside of Unity and it's gonna make it act as if real world physics was associated with it. So now, if we were to click on play, the sphere is gonna drop out of our scene, right? So still not very interesting, but more interesting than it was before. If we were to move it up higher, the sphere would drop from here out of our scene. 
but nothing's happening down below. And so the reason for that is because we've set this to be a rigid body, but we haven't given Unity any instructions on how this should actually interact with everything else in our scene, right? And so to do that, what we need to do is we need to add another component. And this time we're gonna add a collider. And so what a collider is going to do is it's basically going to tell Unity how to, um, how this object should interact with other objects when they collide. So when you set this, this is going to basically set the shape that Unity calculates for collisions. So in the case of a sphere, we would want a sphere collider. And so basically what the sphere collider is going to do is this is going to basically generate a shell on the outside of this and it's gonna calculate how that shell is going to interact with other objects. So now if I click on play, instead of this falling through our ground, it's going to hit the ground right here and it's going to stick. And it's gonna stick because this plane is currently flat, right? So let's say that we were to adjust the rotation of this plane a little bit. So I'm gonna adjust this down like this. Notice how, by the way, this plane also has a collider associated with it. That's why our object here interacts with our object here. But now if we click play, what this is gonna do is it's gonna drop down and then it's gonna roll out of our scene. And so this allows us to create a very simple scene that allows us to add a collider to an object so that it actually does physics simulation. And so once we do this, we can use that information in order to add behaviors to other objects as well. So let's say for example, that I was to come in here and I was to create a cylinder like this. Let's go ahead, let's set its position to, we'll go ahead and move it over here and let's rotate it. So now that we understand how this system works, notice how at the moment, if we were to click play, nothing is gonna happen with this cylinder, right? But and I'm gonna move my camera over here. So the reason that this cylinder isn't actually doing anything is because we haven't come through and added a physics component for rigid body. So because we haven't added the rigid body behavior to this, it's not gonna do anything in our scene. But when we add our rigid body like this, then this is gonna come in here and it's gonna act with the physics along with the sphere right here. And so everything that we do moving forward is going to be built on the principles like this. So all of our objects are gonna have different things applied to them, the different components. And you can see how there's a ton of different options in here for different effects and other things like that. Um, but but everything that we do moving forward is gonna be built on the fundamentals of adding game objects and then adding components to those objects in order to make them behave a certain way. All right, so I will link to the full getting started playlist on this page. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.